I had an opportunity to hear part of the previous panel, and I must say that the sorts of conversations going on here in Philadelphia are being repeated throughout this country. During this very difficult period, we have much discussion underway, not just in terms of what we need to do at the federal level, but also what we need to do at the state and local level. And during the course of my presentation, I will touch upon some of those challenges as well. Well, perhaps my biggest challenge this morning is to cover the world in about 22 minutes. Um, I know that there are some news radio uh, stations that claim that they can cover the world in 22 minutes or less, uh, but they tend to do so without very much content. Uh, what we're going to try to do is the opposite of that. I'm glad you all laughed. <laughs> we do have a presentation available for you. I hope I can figure out the way to work this. Splendid, splendid. We're going to begin right here. And this is something uh, that I believe, Bryn, will be posted on the website uh, for your organization. But let me give you a sense of what I am trying to accomplish. There are any number of risks that we are all now so focused on. We think there may also be some opportunities, opportunities in terms of policy, opportunities in terms of companies that are better situated than others to participate in the environment that we expect will develop. And of course, there are opportunities for investors. During the next few minutes, I will try to run through these fairly quickly, but I understand that we will also have an opportunity for some questions and maybe even some answers. First, let me begin with a quick overview of our economic expectations. I understand that some of these numbers may not be legible to you in the back of the room, so let me point out what we think are the critical elements. First and foremost, yes, we are in a recession. We didn't need the National Bureau of Economic Research to tell us that a few weeks ago. Indeed, the housing sector of the United States has been in recession now for more than three years. The labor markets have been in recession for about 15 months. And our belief is that this recession will likely last another six months or so. That is certainly not an Armageddon forecast, but it's not a particularly happy one either, because before this ends, we do expect that there will be a noteworthy decline in GDP. We think that unemployment may peak at the end of this year or early next year at about 9%, and these are not comfortable numbers. Why do we think the recession will end? All recessions end. Even the Great Depression ended at some point. And there are a number of dynamics underway. Uh, first of all, we see that inventories are now down at record low levels. We also believe, as I'll discuss in a few moments, that economic policy is in the process of marching to the rescue. And the fact that we have already been in recession in so many different sectors of the US economy for so long uh, suggests that some of the normal cyclical dynamic is already underway. In the next chart, you can see something that we all now focus on a great deal. That dark line that looks like the upside down V shows you the activity in the nation's housing markets. New construction for housing peaked in 2005. And you can see the very sharp declines since that time. There have been some offsets, though. One offset had been, please notice the use of the past tense, one offset had been in the form of non-residential construction. So whereas residential construction peaked more than three years ago, non-residential construction by businesses and importantly by state and local governments were continuing to grow. Spending by businesses for new construction has now ceased. And one of the few areas of economic growth 
remains spending on construction by state and local governments. This is a critical factor because when you take a look at the Obama plan for stimulus, a good deal of it is to provide some financial relief to state and local governments as soon as possible so that this ongoing spending by our local governments will not have to cease as a function of budget constraints within 2009. On the next page, you can see some other areas of relative economic vigor within the United States. What we've done here is broken down the different components of our national GDP. We all know, for example, that personal consumption is the single largest category, but what I'm showing you here is not the proportional breakdown, but rather the growth rates. And the dark line represents growth in personal consumption. It clearly has been moving lower in recent months, but notice it was never the most vigorous element of our economy. Instead, two other sectors had that distinction. One was business investment, which had been growing until just a few months ago. And the other one, which is still growing, is exports. The United States, we all know, is the world's largest importer, but we're also a huge exporter. And one of our concerns going forward is not just our economic health, but rather the economic health of our trade customers. The United States is a huge exporter within North America, but also to Europe and to other developed economies. And in the next slide, you can see our forecast for 2009 and 2010 around the world. And I hope you will notice that the economic forecasts that we have for the United States are now also mirrored in these other nations. One of the reasons that 2009 is so hard to forecast is that we are seeing for the first time in many, many years, a synchronization in the global economy. We weaken first. We often are the leading economy in that regard. And we will be seeing the consequences in terms of the impact on other nations during the course of 2009. However, we also believe that the US will be one of the first economies to come out of recession among the first in, among the first out, and we think this is something that you should keep in mind. I'll come back to that in a few moments. The other thing to think about is what's happening in terms of the composition of global growth. What I'm showing you here is the net contribution by various regions of the world. This is the growth between 2000, 2005, I'm going to show you the update, which is 2000 to 2008. And in the first set of bars, you're seeing the net contribution to total global growth by the so-called BRICS nations, Brazil, Russia, India, and China. Uh, but we're showing it here in terms of size order. And in size order, the BRIC nations are the crib nations. In fact, at one point, we thought about calling these emerging economies the cribs, uh, but recognize that that did not play over very well in certain communities. So China, uh, for example, uh, during this period of time, has itself contributed about 25% of total economic growth in the world. The United States, during the same period, because of our recession for the past year or so, didn't contribute as much as China despite the fact that we're larger. We contributed about 15%. The really worrisome thing is that Europe, which is just as large as the United States, contributed just about 10% of economic activity. So when we think about the economic challenges for this year, it's not just our own recession, it's also what's happening in the rest of the world, especially the developed economies. We know that China is itself weakening at this time. The other big challenge that many people point to, interestingly, is inflation. This particular slide shows our forecast for 2009, 2010, 